before I answer the first question, I need to answer your second question. What is char cloth? Char cloth is a piece of organic material, in this case 100% cotton, that has been reduced to just carbon. Like charcoal used to be a piece of wood and it's charred at very high temperature with the lack of oxygen, the same thing is done to this piece of cloth. You can use any cotton or 100% organic material cook it at high heat with the lack of oxygen, in this case inside of a box. Pieces of grandpa's pajamas will work just fine. A piece of flannel, a piece of linen, as long as it's 100% cotton, put it in this box, put it on the fire, let it cook until the smoke doesn't come out of it anymore, and you've got char cloth. Very simple material, very fragile, but very flammable. That's char cloth. Another question you might have is what's the difference between flint, chert, and quartz? Not very much. Agate is in the quartz family as well. This is a piece of agate. It has many different uh, matrix in it. This one is more along the chert line. And any hard material with a good quality carbon steel will make sparks. Another question you might have is what is a ferro rod or a fire rod? It's actually ferro serum, mish metal. It has magnesium and iron mix. Mish metal and ferro serum are very close in their makeup. It's just a different recipe. But both of them will make tremendous amount of sparks. A Bic lighter has got a ferro rod in it. And As you can see, it makes great sparks. The problem with a ferro rod or a fire stick is that it is expendable. Over a period of time, this will be whittled down and need to be replaced. It is not a renewable resource, where a rock and a piece of steel are. A good quality piece of steel like a file and a rock will make sparks. Ferro rods come in a variety of sizes. You can get big ones on lanyards, you can get little tiny ones. Uh, very handy device to have, but they're fairly heavy and they are consumable. Another question that you might have is what's inside that piece of plastic straw? Well, there's stuff in here that you might need in an extreme situation, like a piece of char cloth. The same char cloth that I made in my little can. A piece of steel wool. You shred this and, and get the hairs very fine and put it on top of the char cloth. And then last but not least is probably the best part of the fire straw. And that is a half of a cotton ball that has been dipped halfway in jelly wax for candles. So now we have a very uh, flammable little device mixed with the char cloth and the steel wool we could make a fire and we could get one started with very little else. You would put your little nest of steel wool in there, get your char cloth 
ember started put it in here turn this into a little bird nest blow on it when the ember ignites the steel wool the steel wool will ignite the cotton ball and then the wax will keep this whole thing burning for about two minutes which is ample time for you to be able to start a fire unfortunately we're in a campground and I can't uh, start a fire because we've had high fire danger um, I, I would love to finish this demonstration but basically you make a small birds nest and this is from a cottonwood tree this is right underneath the bark and it makes an excellent fire starter we would take our cotton ball soaked in wax with our ember glowing and put it down inside this bird nest and blow on it and now you've got a fire going this is a great fire starter okay this is a fresnel lens and this is about a 60 degree day full sunlight and a piece of punk you got it Houston follow him up We've got an ember on a piece of punk, and what was that, about five seconds, three seconds? Yep. Did not take very long at all. Fresnel lens. Absolutely phenomenal for starting fires. Maybe not primitively. <laughs> <laughs> Using technology. Okay, so what is it? This is a stick stove. It's actually a rocket stove that was developed by Dr. Winarski back in the mid 80s and its whole job was to be able to cook with a minimal amount of wood or materials you can use cow pies or, or whatever but that's the furnace down inside and you feed it sticks thus being called a stick stove but it's also called a rocket stove because down inside at the very bottom is the air inlet and as the hot gases are burned inside the chamber and they rise up through the chimney and come out combustion takes place in here and it pulls air from from the bottom and some stoves make a rocket type shh type noise uh, this one does not this one is a stick stove and it will boil water in about eight minutes um, you can easily cook five pounds of potatoes on it it will hold a big pot uh, this is a really cool little stove the um, obvious part of it is that it's made inside of an ammo can so this is a rocket stove in an ammo can and I'm going to show you what you need if you wanted to build your own. So this little stove, we, we nicknamed it Tetris together. Um, but the whole idea as we were building it, uh, and I say we, I had several accomplices, but um, Grant, my apprentice, and I spent quite a bit of time figuring this out just how would it work and what do we need and so on and so forth so um, this little guy right here does fit down in here and that's why we call it tetris so the top of the lid drops in place and then the little rake that i described goes through the hinge pin like so this one hasn't been fine-tuned this way by the way the prototype but this, uh, this little box has got everything we, we need in it including an ash rake to get ashes out of the bottom if it should be during a test run we used 
a dozen or so sticks this size and I could put all the ashes in the palm of my hand. It was uh, very efficient. And that's one of the benefits to this style of stove is that it's between 75 and 95% efficient from a wood burning fireplace or um, a fire pit. The obvious first thing that you would need is an empty ammo can. 50 caliber ammo cans are still available. They're starting to make them out of plastic, so they won't be around forever. The, the hood is hinged and it will come off really simply just by pushing sideways. But I went one step further and there are ashes that accumulate in the bottom. And so I removed the pins by taking a screwdriver and just spreading these apart. And then I built a, a piece of music wire with a little um, rake on the end of it. And this can be used to go underneath the stove furnace area to pull the waste or the ashes out uh, if you needed to cook on it long term. So I modified mine, but the hinge comes off very simply. So that's just something that I wanted to do. So the next thing that we need is the combustion chamber itself, the actual oven. And I chose a four inch piece of square tubing because it was readily available. I drilled uh, eight holes, two on each side, and these are for pins to slide through, and this will be where the grates are, are stored. The grates will slide in down on top of these pins. There'll be two long ones here and two short ones, two short ones, two short ones, and then they were all interconnected inside and welded together. Those pins hold the first layer of screen inside, and this is a piece of three-quarter inch expanded metal that has got a twist in it, and the second screen will sit on top of it like this, and it gives more airflow uh, availability. And these just drop down inside and sit on top of the pins that are down here. So that was a real simple start. Next thing is a base plate. The base plate uh, that I chose was 1 8 inch steel. It doesn't have to be real heavy. There's no major heat on it. The majority of the heat is inside this combustion chamber. Now, I chose to cut a, bread, a loaf of bread shaped door in mine and you can see inside the grates that sit in there. I'll give dimensions for this uh, at the end of the video so that you can duplicate it. I will not make these for other people. I made um, 16 of these as gifts, and if you're one of the lucky recipients, then this video is for your benefit, just to see what went into making your stove. So, stove, the bottom, and then we needed the chimney. According to Dr. Wynarski, the chimney should be two to three times the diameter of the actual oven, the, the burn chamber. So if this is four inches across, we would want eight to 12 inches tall for the chimney. Combustion does occur inside the chimney. Now the chimney should be well insulated and this one is not. Um, my chimney is open to the environment and I've measured 800 degrees at the bottom uh, of the pot so there's plenty of heat to get up there but the more the higher the chimney is to a certain point the more combustion that takes place and the more chemicals are removed the more particulate matter is removed and that's what Dr. Wynarski wanted to achieve is he wanted to get the particulate matter and the dangerous gases out of the materials that were being used for cooking inside of confined spaces in third world countries so this was designed primarily to help save lives. Uh, what I've designed mine for was, um, in the event you ever don't have propane, electricity, gas, um, building a large fire to cook on is cumbersome. This takes five minutes to go out and find the sticks that are in the woods. As you can see behind, they're just loaded with them. I could find enough wood to survive months on right here in my own campsite. So the chimney's got the same kind of a deal going on. I 
drilled four holes in the bottom and pins will go through those holes and be welded into place. And that will hold the chimney on top of the oven. So this one's got a pin in the corner and this keeps it from turning, otherwise it wants to walk around. So those pins basically just keep the chimney in place. Okay. So at the bottom of the chimney is the plate that allows it to rest on the stove itself. And it was just an eighth inch piece of steel, I think this one might even be three sixteenths, um, that just sits on top of the chimney and it was at a, at a uh, predetermined place. The pins were put in it, it was welded in place, and that creates the chimney. You can see it was welded all the way around. And then on top of the chimney, we needed something to be able to cook on. We need something, um, this is 3 16 steel. Uh, this took a little bit of figuring out so that we can Tetris it into the box. Everything fits in here, the lid comes on, tightens up, or closes up, and we can carry this uh, in the back of a vehicle or store it in a cabin or whatever. But these were just steel plates that I cut out in this configuration and basically I uh, came up with a design that sat across the top like that, put a notch in it so that they intersect. This one doesn't have one yet, but that one would sit there like that and then just spot welded them together. Here's a completed one here. So that's all it took for the pot holder. Okay, and then once we get that part done, which is fairly simple, and there's a few hours invested here. Uh, the design work took a lot of time, but actual putting it together didn't take very much time at all. Uh, once we got everything figured out, it was click, click, click. So, those are the basic pieces. Now, where the door is cut is critical, and I left a little bit of room between the grates and the door opening just so that the fire could remain inside here. But then I took a piece of, and this, by the way, is three inch chimney um, material. Same stuff, it's just your standard um, Schedule 40 steel, one eighth inch thick. Um, I cut this one out of 45, and then it gets welded onto the side of the oven like so. And the sticks go in here and feed the oven. But I did leave a little bit of room here, and again, I'll have drawings at the end of the video so that you can see a little more uh, definition. But that fits in here about like this. We do want a little bit of room up here at the top, and I'm about ready to move to that point. So the next part was how to hold it into the box, and I wanted it insulated. And I went down to a local sheet metal supply, and I asked them to bend 16-gauge steel into a U. Uh, with predetermined dimensions, and then I took a plasma cutter and, and we cut out uh, the centers of this. And this drops over the top of our furnace, like so, and helps to hold it in place. Okay, and that's why we need a little bit of room right here, just for that lip to be able to sit there like that. Okay, and this is what's going to hold it into the ammo can. Then, I did some searching, and this is a ceramic material, it's uh, one inch thick, it looks more like three quarter, but it's one inch thick, and it is a fiberglass um, material, and you can get it at any um, wood stove place. Um, small quantities should not be expensive. And then when you make a couple pieces of this, this is a, a piece of one inch that I just simply cut in half or tore it in half, it's actually built in layers and uh, tore it in half, and that's going to sit down inside the bottom of the can. And the whole oven is going to sit on top of this. Uh, there's a ridge inside the can that comes right down through the middle to keep the ammo up off the bottom, and this is just going to keep the bottom of the can insulated. So, here's a completed, com 
completed uh, of them. The one piece that I haven't shown you are pieces of angle iron that are welded in over here, and that was so that I could pop rate it the can to the actual oven itself or to the to the firebox. Okay, and this is pop riveted at the back and that holds the top in. The front is not secure, but the, the stove can't go anywhere. Okay. So the insulation is simply folded in here like this. And you can see the ridge at the bottom of the can. Um, we're going to put one of these on each side of that ridge to keep the bottom of the oven off the floor. And that's just just for because because the more insulated the oven is, the more efficient it will be. Okay, so this will sit in here basically like this. And then once the box is built, the stove is built, it's going to sit in here like this. And then this top ring is going to go back in here like this. And that's what holds the oven to the can. Okay, I think I pretty much covered everything in, in the way that it's built. Um, like I said, the design itself took me quite a little bit of time uh, to come up with. There is a person that builds these commercially and they are for sale. Um, Minute Man Stoves. His design is what appears to be a little different than mine. Um, I've never seen his in person. I don't know how it operates. I, I, I've only watched a brief video on it. But uh, basically the, the um, fundamentals are exactly the same. This is a stick stove. The one thing that everybody needs to know about their stoves is that sticks should not be packed in here tightly. We really would like to have airspace around the sticks. And one of the analogies that I read was kind of like three people laying in a bed. If you lay really close together, the heat builds up between the people and we don't get any air movement. If you separate the sticks, air flows around them and uh, it's much more efficient. So. Keep your sticks three to five, maybe the size of your thumb. And test runs of this stove, we used probably a dozen of these sticks on three runs, and it will heat up 20 ounces of water in about eight minutes to a, a roaring boil in ten, um, way way hotter than we need, but. You could purify water, um, and you can cook a meal. And on this stove, because of the way it's built, this will hold a very large pot up on top and should be able to cook a meal. But I think this is just a really cool little stove to throw in the back of a vehicle or in a cabin, and we don't have to have any fuel other than available sources. Cow pies work. Uh, all kinds of organic materials, leaves, I mean you can feed anything that will burn can go in this stove and it's very efficient. So that's a little definition of my stick stove. I hope uh, this helps you understand. Uh, I don't know why I really got interested in it and why I did it uh, other than I just thought it was really cool and, and putting it in an ammo can makes a lot of sense. So, uh, enjoy your gift. And if you want one of these, go out, find the materials, the list that I've got at the end of the video, and uh, make one. You could do it in a weekend.